Here we are again, days until the Moses Lake Bounty Hole. And my personal story with the Moses Lake Bounty Hole starts at the very beginning. In 2011, when the Buchanan brothers first started it with some donated money they put in and collected from others, as an additional event to have alongside with the Sand Scorpions Team Mud Bogs. The Team Mud Bogs have been going on for years before as a fun little competition with randomly drawn team members requiring teamwork, strategy, and cooperation, where at the end of the day, there was nothing to win. I only went and entered two separate years. The first time in 2009 in the Truck Blazer, also known as Disappointment, back on 44s and 1 tons, and the second year in 2010 with the Mudslide. In 2011, marked the first ever big prize money bounty hole in the Northwest, started by Daniel Jacob and Zane Buchanan, along with other local friends that pitched in. That year, I had the big crew cab on 54 inch boggers with the cast iron headed HO502 in it, cobbled together. And long story less long, due to the steering and brake issues I was having, it took us nearly three hours to get out to the event location. And by the time we got there, the team mud bogs were just over with. We were in time for the first ever bounty hole, and I was there with a mega truck on 54s, parked within a couple hundred feet of the starting line with Daniel Buchanan encouraging me to enter as planned. But I bowed out of the competition, both frustrated with the issues I was having with the truck and deeming it not really safe to drive with people standing close by. That year, Kevin Zufall won it in his yellow 57 Chevy mega truck on these exact wheels and tires I have now, in fact. After the first 2011 bounty hole was over, my friend Robert Weiss and I made the long drive back out to load up and go home. Little did I know that this would be the closest I'd come to the starting line of the Moses Lake bounty hole until 2023 myself, and it would be until 2022 before Robert Weiss got to drive in it. I've been to every Moses Lake and Sand Scorpions bounty hole since the start, except one. In 2012, I was pushing to rebuild the truck blazer, also known as Disappointment, on another frame on two and a half tons with an actual somewhat built 489 big block. But with a budget of, well, next to nothing, even though I had most of all the major pieces I needed, I didn't have the time or the funds to finish it in time and actually burnt myself out trying so hard to where I literally walked away from working on anything truck related that weekend and stayed home and painted mountains. The next year, surprise, surprise, I still wasn't ready, but my friend Brian bought Lee Siler's old square body short bed mega truck, and we pulled the HO502 out of the big crew cab, and he ran it in the bounty hole with my engine, and I was just there to help and watch. Needless to say, every year has been another reason or excuse that has prevented me from going and running one of my own rigs, often the lack of money, and I'll be honest too, often the lack of uh, proper time management. In 2014, I had the mudslide and I literally just went out to watch and it had fuel delivery issues on the drive out there and I literally had to hitch a ride out to barely make it in time to even watch. In 2015 I owned Carnage which was a runner driver when I bought it from Sean and when I planned to take it it didn't even want to start or run anymore. When I finally started it to move it to the shop it broke a rear axle shaft on flat ground. Plus, money was really tight that time of year, so I took on a haul job in that direction to help pay for my trip there to go watch. And then the transfer case in the Dodge I was driving, uh, well, it cracked and broke on the freeway, making me get towed home and go get another truck to try to make the trip. And well, then a wheel bearing failed on the trailer. At least the following years after that, I saw that I had things in life, financially or vehicle-wise, line up right at the right time, or I should say the wrong time, bounty hole time of year, where I knew I wouldn't be ready, and I just went to start filming it. And then came 2019. Robert Weiss and I decided that after years of sitting, we could get both the Truck Blazer and Carnage going again, if we started early enough in August. I had a 498 stroker and an IFS plow truck that I bought for pretty cheap that we could recam and throw in the truck blazer. And I gotten rid of a bunch of cars and bought a 632 big block for Carnage the year before. That 632 block and heads had actually ran at the bounty hole twice before by Kirk and by Brad in different years in different rigs. 
So Robert Weiss and I spent, well, many, many long hours and nights getting both trucks apart and then back together. We pushed after setback and after setback to the last minute. Finally, we were ready to leave with both in the early hours of the morning, the day of the bounty hole, almost four hours away. We got there, unloaded fast, and started the drive out when both rigs started overheating. Then we had dead batteries, starter failures, loss of oil pressure, and blown transmission lines. I finally just left Carnage out in the sand dunes and told Robert to hurry on and keep driving Disappointment to get there in time if he could run it. And it finally just blew a radiator hose in the mud flats almost three quarters of the way there when we finally just abandoned it too. And we barely made it there in time to film the competition while both of the trucks that we spent the last months on sat broke down in the sand dunes out there somewhere. In 2020 and 2021, I resumed not even trying to bring trucks, and I was just going to film instead. Then came 2022. We had mostly completed the build of DOS, a 1960 Suburban that we used the body and most of the major components that I had accumulated up here to build it from. A major project that Ann and Chuck Carl took on and was also going to be a tribute from the Rockstar Wheelers Club for a big sponsor and friend, Shad Boardwell, who sadly passed away in an accident. Shad was often a competitor at the Sand Scorpions Bounty Hole, so it was fitting to run it its first time in the mud in his honor there. My friend Corey Ray and Kevin also had wanted to see Carnage go again, and I had a 638 big block that I bought at the Portland Swap Meet for a really good deal for money that I had from selling a Dodge. They put the engine and transmission in Carnage and Corey was gonna drive it. Robert Weiss was back on board for getting disappointment going again, fixing a bent frame and motor mounts, and I had bought two tall from Clancy earlier that year, ready to run, so I decided that I would enter it. In addition, Mud Walker and the Big Dreams Mudden Group had been talking with me, and we decided to build my old 81 Suburban that I owned back since high school to be their mega truck mud bogger build. I also had recently gotten back a 1972 X Plow Suburban that a friend who had passed away, Craig Whitehouse, had over 20 years ago. In fact, I had gotten it from Craig back in 2000 or 2001 for about six months and owned it back then for a little bit until we traded back again. And he got it back and long story short, it made its rounds, went to Idaho and then made it back to Spokane and then I bought it back. Now it was back up here and mine again, all stock with a small block and a bad turbo 350 transmission on the original half tons. And well, Justin and I decided that in 14 days left to the bounty hole, that we try to put it on two and a half tons, 44 inch boggers with a big block and a turbo 400 and 205. While also helping finish the 81 mega truck build and getting disappointment ready and all the tow rigs. We pulled the 454 out of this crew cab dually for the old Hoopty 72 Suburban. And we pulled the 454 out of this for the 81 Suburban. It was a short 14 days because after long nights, little sleep and lots of work, time moved so fast and all of a sudden it was bounty hole day morning and we were late. First thing we had to do was jump start too tall. We didn't have these wheels yet, so we couldn't mount these tires up. The 54 inch boggers were on carnage, but we had these tires on the 81, but they were too big for it. So we took the rims and tires off this and put it on the 81 Suburban. And then Robert Weiss borrowed some wide like flotation type tires from Robert Schmidt to put on this. Then we we're gonna put these V-treads on the carnage, but by the time everything was there, they were ready to start sign-in registration. And we hadn't swapped those tires on yet, so I told them all to go. So mud starts taking off with that. And Corey starts following him. Then the water pump blew in the 81 Suburban and it was a no-go. He didn't even make it to the entry to the park. Disappointment overheated several times on Robert but made it out there and the Hoopty, the untested of them all, drove out there just fine. But we were so late and missed driver's registration by the time we got out there that they had thrown my name in the hat for too tall and uh, Justin didn't have a spot yet because he was out there following me. So I basically said, hey, I'll give up my spot we can, Justin's been working hard on all of these rigs, helping us out. Let him run, I'll set it out with two tall, and let him run in the old hoopty. In the end, the decision was the right one because had I actually gone to drive two tall, the batteries were dead again, and the starter was also basically wore out. At the end of the day, after all the runs were done, well, it took us like two hours until after dark to finally put a jump start on two tall enough to get the starter to barely crank over to fire, and then driving out, it died and I had to get towed back the rest of the way to the trailer. And as fate would have it, or the curse of the bounty hole would have it, the one truck that ran and drove that was 100% ready to go before we went on this weekend in 2022 
that we didn't have to do anything to is the one I was gonna drive and I couldn't even drive it if I wanted to. So needless to say, 2022 was not my year again. Out of six rigs that we brought from here, four of them made it to the starting line. But hey, that was a big accomplishment. Robert Weiss finally got a drive for his first time and unfortunately last time. The flotation tires did, well, let's just say, I didn't have high expectations for them. And then they disappointed even me and my low expectations because he barely even made it, well, anywhere with those tires before it just kind of stopped moving. Had we had the tires for it on it, it probably would have gone at least a lot further. We found out later that Carnage's brake calipers were both basically dragging the whole way. And also the torque converter that I ran out of time and money to get in time for the new engine and transmission combo. Well, uh, that torque converter that we reused is not holding up to that engine and putting all the power to the tires. So uh, it kind of just spun a lot on the 54 inch boggers and uh, didn't go very fast. So at the end of 2022, I have still not pulled up to the starting line myself to the Moses Lake Bounty Hole. But Carnage had been to the Bounty Hole now at least three times, twice with Sean owning and driving it, and once after I owned it when Corey drove it. This set of tires had actually been to the very first Bounty Hole and won it with Kevin Zufall. All my 54 inch boggers made it for the first time into the Bounty Hole. This engine, or at least this block, I think had been to the, into the Bounty Hole at least twice with Sean. This engine was in the big crew cab when I first went out there at the first bounty hole, but didn't enter. And then it went to the third bounty hole with Brian driving it in his short box. This 632 had been to the bounty hole twice with two different owners and two different rigs. Once with Kirk and his short box Chevy, and the second time with Brad and Bentley's rail. And then with me owning it, it made it almost, uh, well, about halfway out there. And I left it in the sand dunes with Carnage when everything was going wrong. These axles had made it out there at the very first bounty hole and one axle shaft made it out there twice because we had used one shaft for the old hoopty in 2022. This 505 had ran out there once with Robert Schmidt, but didn't run very good. So there's a lot of parts and pieces and things and whatever from up here that actually made it to the bounty hole and in the bounty hole, just not me with any of them. But as I said many, many years before, maybe next year. Following the bounty hole, we fixed the stuff that was wrong with the trucks and uh, made it to Moye. Robert Weiss and I went through this 505 and put crank and bearings in it and put it back together and got it in disappointment from Moye. And sadly, that was his last time he ever got to drive the truck and he didn't get a chance to make it to the bounty hole again. In October of 2022, Robert Weiss passed away due to a sudden medical issue that was fully unexpected. So in the spring of 2023, it was back to just me driving the truck blazer at Moye and I took it easy on it so that nothing could really go wrong before the next bounty hole. Corey Bell at the Northport Racetrack hosted a race day and mud bog as a memorial for Robert in August of 2023, and I ran the truck blazer there in honor of him as the last event before going back to the Sand Scorpions bounty hole in September. Of course, after one run, it lost all oil pressure. So I had to do the one thing that I didn't want to have to do again, a last minute engine swap. In early 2023, I sold two Suburbans I had and bought another 505 from Oregon out of a boat built with a dart block and uh, I was gonna have it as a backup just in case I needed it. And of course, now I did. So the 505 that we put in the fall of 2022 came out and the new X-Boat big block 505 went in. My entire motivation to run the truck blazer myself at the Sand Scorpions Bounty Hole at that point wasn't for me or because I wanted to drive it but it was more for making up for the short distance that went the prior year and at least make it further than like, well, 30 feet or so off the starting line and to do it for Robert Weiss, my friend. I also tried to take too tall again just to make up for the fact that it was a failed attempt the year before. Carnage still needed more parts and a lot of money thrown at it and more time, so it just stayed at home, but we had to do another last minute motor swap and the old hoopty and then we made sure that the 81 Suburban had a good water pump on it again since well after last year's water pump and well I think one or two others that failed uh, it seems to be a thing. So there we were Sand Scorpions Bounty Hole 2023 on time at the driver's meeting. I almost couldn't believe it. 
To be honest, I'm not a person who does well in crowds and this event has grown bigger and bigger and it's been hard for me to even be out there at events, even filming, but I've kind of gotten used to it because all the attention is on the competitors and not the cameramen. But here I was, signed up as a competitor in both disappointment and too tall with all eyes on me for two runs. Heck, it's even taken me years to even get comfortable enough to talk behind a camera or narrate anything like these videos. 20 years ago, I had mud events at my place and I had to have others give announcements and talk at the driver's meetings because I couldn't deal with over five people looking at me at the same time, even if they were people I knew. I anticipated I'd feel sick to my stomach and lose all sense of reality and how to do anything when I'd pull up to the starting line here. I knew I'd have to try and imagine that the crowd wasn't even watching and just tune them out and just drive like no one was even there. Plus, I knew neither truck that I was driving was really competitive at all and would probably be embarrassing to get stuck so easy again. I just wanted to get past where Robert got stuck at in the truck blazer last year and go further for him. With like 30 entries though, I knew that at least my odds of picking two numbers within a few numbers of each other were really slim so that I'd have time between driving each truck. And I'd hope that I'd have numbers further down the running order so I could kind of see how the mud and ruts would pan out before making my runs. Plus, I really didn't want Too Tall to be in the first half of the rigs running so that I wouldn't upset other people and drivers with the big ruts and holes that I was probably gonna leave. I'd even volunteer to go last. I didn't care. Like, as long as the numbers I picked though were, you know, further on down the line, closer to 30. So I picked four and six. Okay, those were not numbers I wanted and I did not want them that close together, but at least there's one rig in between. As long as the people that pick numbers right around me aren't the fast guys, then at least it'll look less embarrassing for me. Oh great, look who got two, three, and five. This is gonna be an embarrassing act to follow. But I'm thinking in my mind, maybe it'll be like other years where no one picks the line that I wanna pick until, you know, later on in the running order. So I'll be able to take that line first. Oh, okay, Ty picked number one and he's, uh, he's picking the exact line that, well, that is the line. All these years past, I've watched uh, friends and other competitors and like everyone just uh, kind of misses taking that corner there or slowing down enough to make the line. That's my goal is to take that line too. So, I mean, I guess the line's established now. So, I mean, all I got to do is uh, set myself up and follow it. So first up's disappointment and I got to rush because while well, I'm number four, um, I'm following three really good runs already. Usually the first three or five or six runs at the previous bounty holes haven't been like super impressive and we've already got basically a full pull. I'm just tuning out the crowds there. I'm tuning out, I'm being watched. I'm just driving for Robert. Just wanna make it further for him. Yeah, I feel nervous. Like literally it's been like 12 years and I have not pulled up to the starting line at this event. This is actually the first time I'm pulling up to the starting line in my own vehicle. Yeah, I hope I don't screw this up, but it's okay, it's okay. No one is there, no one's watching. It's just me driving through the mud. Okay, seat belts on, safety equipment's there, passengers buckled in, I've got, oh boy, let's see, I gotta remember to shift, I gotta remember, let's see, uh, okay, fans on, fuel pump still on, okay. Carburetor's loading up a little bit, let's try to clear that out. Well, it's time to go. And uh, well, I've already forgotten to shift. And then right about here is the moment that, well, um, I can't see anything anymore. I just splashed mud everywhere. And I had to make the decision to kind of let off the throttle like I was going to and strategically turn and take that line that Ty created for us. But uh, uh, at this point, I'm like, if I slow down or let off or stop at all, it'll be really embarrassing if I get stuck right here. And I don't want to repeat a last year. So I'm just going to hold the throttle down I can't see where I'm going. I'm gonna kinda angle slightly right, but I don't wanna turn too far because I can't see where the edge is. So I guess I'm driving blind again. So after I finally remembered to shift, I just, uh, well, just held it to the floor until we quit moving and then we quit moving. But uh, this is exactly where I did not wanna be. I mean, for years I've watched everyone else get stuck right here and I'm like, why didn't you guys turn? Uh, why didn't I turn? Why, why couldn't I see? Oh well, all in all, I knew I wasn't making it anyways. All I had to do was beat one person to be in the top three, because I was number four, and uh, I was number four, the last place so far. Yeah, okay, but hey, we still made it further than it made it last year. I did it for Robert, okay? And we made it further, so that's all I really wanted to accomplish in reality. And then following this disappointment, 
A fast second place run by Brian Hesse. So great, first and second place already. Uh, one's all the way out, one's really far in, and now I'm going to drive the heaviest truck here. People are talking about power to weight ratios. Well, uh, yeah, I've got the worst one of them all. I mean, I think I am the heaviest truck here, but next heaviest to me is Flyboy, but uh, Flyboy's got a lot of power. I've got a 12 valve Cummins. But hey, I'm pulling up to the starting line again for the second time this year. I mean, this is a big accomplishment just for myself. So uh, at least this truck too, it goes so slow that I have plenty of time to think about what I'm doing and you know, I'm not splashing mud on my windshield. It's, you know, way up here because it's, well, too tall. And I can kind of figure out where I'm going. I had Chelsea kind of watch the stakes, so I wasn't running over stakes because I couldn't see them really too well either. So we're just kind of going and going and going. And it actually went a lot further than I thought. And somehow we chugged our way into a third place position, which I was uh, totally unexpected. I thought this thing was gonna sink way sooner off and well, here we are, third place. I mean, I, I'm not gonna complain at all. Like my, I had way lower expectations for this than that. I mean, tuning the crowd out, tuning the crowd out. Okay, let's get pulled out. And then my next worry is can they pull this thing out? So I mean, okay, that's good, that's good. We got pulled out without, you know, requiring two tractors and it's a miracle. The old hoopty was soon up after and well, uh, Steve and Justin worked a lot on trying to get a carburetor on the thing that would run. And I, all my only hopes was last year that this year, the thing would actually just open up and run without the timing moving and sputtering and backfiring and popping. And then, well, it kind of just was sputtering and, and not running so great. Like it was starting for fuel and uh, well, yeah. So uh, he made it that far and uh, I mean, still, still uh you know not last and then it was mud's turn to go and you know here's another uh low power to weight ratio rig here i mean the suburban it's one of the heavier trucks there it's a mega truck you know they're not light and it's a suburban and uh, it has a peanut port head 454 we pull out of a crew cab really isn't that much of a motor but you know low horsepower lots of weight i mean too tall did decent so this year got mud bkt's on it and uh he's just gonna turn his way and see how far he can go got the old four speed manual in it and things really not running up to par but we got it to run okay after another carb swap and uh well i was actually very impressed i mean he chose the right line he didn't have the biggest tires definitely did not have the horsepower had plenty of weight but somehow <laughs> the old mud drove the old high school suburban i had since clear back in 98 to like a sixth place finish i mean in the top 10. I, I, like I said, I was not expecting that we'd be in the top 10 with any of the rigs up here. Devin Villeneuve drove Flyboy and uh, well, he has a lot of weight, but he's got a lot of power too. And he powered his way right on past two talls. I guess uh, only made it like a few inches past uh, our mark with two tall into third place. And uh, he said he could feel the holes. And then Mud got a ride and shred lettuce with Joel Villeneuve driving. and. They got their way into fifth place with uh, shredded lettuce on the Sherp tires, which uh, it wasn't even running that good. So they, they had some fuel issues and some other issues where it was not opening up and running right. They still got fifth place. Well, there you have it. There's the bounty hole from my perspective. It only took me 12 years and quite a few attempts over the years to finally make it to the starting line, driving one of my own vehicles for the first time ever, twice in one year. And I'm just amazed at the fact that two of the rigs from here got in the top 10. Uh, you know, couldn't have asked for a better outcome. The competition out there was great. Uh, Love seeing all the other guys run. Uh, we thank the Sand Scorpions group. We thank Brandon Douglas and all the volunteers that put in all the hours to do this. Thank the Buchanans for starting this, you know, and every, all the sponsors. And there's just a, this is a great family friendly event. Trucks Gone Wild is out here too. Brandon's been really working with them the last few years to promote the event, so uh, it's getting bigger and bigger. As we get ready for uh, this year, we're gonna try it again. Don't know what rigs are actually gonna go and make it, but uh, we'll see. My goal, more than 10 feet, may not actually happen. I think the gatekeeper's gonna eat us, but uh, we will see you there in a few days, I guess. And uh, thanks again, everyone. A huge thank you to all my friends who have helped out along the way in one way or another. There's just too many of you to name off. And to absent friends, we know you're still riding with us every time we drive through the mud.